Right, this video we're looking at how to use a stopwatch, uh, how, how to measure time. Um, and there's a lot of different accuracy techniques you can use to do that, but first of all, just how we use this. Um, I've lost a button here, but this is my start-stop. So we start it, and then we stop it, and we've also got a reset button which resets it back to zero. So you have to make sure that you're on zero uh, before you start, otherwise you'll be out by whatever amount was already on there. So if I start here, I've got 1.19 seconds already on the clock, and if I go to start measuring, so I go from here to here, then I'm going to be out by 1.19 1, by 1 seconds. So you always re-zero it, re-zero it, okay, really important. Obvious, but sometimes it, the obvious gets missed while you're uh, trying to do that. Okay, so another really good strategy, um, I think the basic use of it is pretty straightforward, but another strategy for ensuring good timing is to have a countdown. Okay, so a countdown is where you might go, three, two, one, go. Okay, and then stop as well. And the countdown just ensures um, that, say, a person is releasing a marble to roll down a, a track, that they're releasing it on the go exactly the same time as you're releasing it. And it gives you the ability to anticipate when to start it. Whereas if they're just sitting there and you're watching them, they could release it at any time and there could be a bit more delay between when they let go and when you start it. Okay, it's inconsistent, it's not accurate, it's not good. So if you have a countdown, you go three, two, one, go. Boom. And then you can be much more accurate. Hopefully that's clear. The other thing you can do, which I've done on a pendulum video, is to um, measure, like for, for the pendulum, it's going to swing there and back, um, you can measure multiple swings. So for instance, we might go three, two, one, we might start it swinging and have a little countdown with swings rather than a countdown for just a, a number countdown, um, a time countdown. So we'd go three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. And I don't know how accurate that was anyway, but um, the this time here, 5.71 seconds, because I measured five swings, I would divide that by five to get the time for one swing. So that is not so much a, a, a timing thing, but it's a good way to spread out um, the inaccuracy that comes from you starting and stopping. There's going to be a random error. You're, you're going to be out by a little random amount of time every time that you take a measurement, both at the start and the stop. So it's better to measure uh, for five entire swings, so you're not starting and stopping for each of those five, you start and stop once each, for the very start and the very end after five, and you divide that little tiny bit of random error from the start and from the stop over all five swings. So you're reducing the amount of error that comes into it. That's, that's the whole point of doing that uh, multiple measurement. Okay, And of course, you can always do a repeat and average. So you can uh, take three or four different readings, um, as many as you feel you need, um, and, and divide by the number. There's, there's a little bit more I can explain about that, but the video is getting on a little bit already. Um, so, yeah, repeating and averaging, multiple measurements, uh, countdown, um, yeah. And the cool thing about stopwatches as well, and, and experimental setup in the class, you can repeat a measurement if you obviously stuff it up. So, there you go, that's how to use a stopwatch.